I, uh, as was mentioned, was a conservationist, career conservationist. I had uh, been in the Nixon White House at the Council on Environmental Quality under Russell Train. I've been in charge of land use and, uh, well, Exxon, or what was it? Um, I guess it was the Alaska Pipeline that I uh, kind of formed my impressions of the West and pros and cons of that development there. And um, then headed the Conservation Foundation and the World Wildlife Fund after they merged. So I came to the issues uh, with a predisposition to respect natural resources in the environment from a conservationist perspective and was particularly moved by the Science Advisory Board of EPA, a very distinguished, then very distinguished group of scientists, who um, recommended a number of things, among which was, uh, I'd asked the question, what are the major threats to the health and to the ecology of the United States? And to what degree do, do the EPA priorities, as reflected in our budget, conform to those priorities? And ecology. Wetlands, uh, estuaries were specifically mentioned as major priorities that affected the country that were being transformed and that needed protection. So I, I already had that predisposition, but the scientists reinforced it. And that was uh, something that I had actually indicated I would require, I would promote before I even took office. As soon as I was announced, I think on December 22nd, 1988, I received a call from the Environmental Defense Fund. I received a lot of calls. Everybody wanted to prepare me for my new role. And um, so I had a couple of hours of briefing at the World Wildlife Fund on something called the Two Forks Dam, of which I had never heard. I was a little surprised to see the size of the dam and remarked that I had not heard about it but I hadn't. On my first day in office, I learned this, by the way, preparing for this conference, my first day in office, I had a meeting with the regional administrator, Jim Scherer. And uh, seeing that I was questioning the premises of the project, very much in the way I had been briefed by the Environmental Defense Fund, he became alarmed. And he said, you know, this has been approved by all levels of government. The governor's behind it. The mayor is behind it. The regional office is behind it. Your water staff supports this. Your timing is not the best. <laughs> I remember looking at him and saying, and thinking to myself, I'm a raw new administrator. I have found the men's room, but um, your timing is not the best. <laughs> I said, you, you could have cleaned this up if this is a project of such importance and such unanimous support. Odd that it comes to me. The question that I have had looking back is the role of the White House was quite nervous about it, the Chief of Staff especially. He later said, I wish to heaven I'd never heard of Two Forks. I said, well, I wish you'd never heard of Two Forks too. He was not a supporter of my decision. Um, but I think from a political perspective, it was, it was difficult for the President because once it was known that I was very seriously interested in the details of this project, <coughs> For the White House then to allow it or direct that it be permitted to go forward would not have been consistent with the president's wish to be the environmental president. So they certainly did not want to antagonize the Republican leadership in Colorado by opposing it. So it was my baby, and that was fine. When I began to look at it, the first thing that I noticed was that the Population and usage, water usage, water need numbers look very high. First of all, probably few remember, but Denver was losing population in those days. So the idea of projecting very significant increases related on per capita use was questionable. Secondly, the Corps of Engineers figures had a 20% increase in per capita water use. I was also aware I think it was Senator Wirth who talked about the Foothills Agreements that had not been honored, and I was aware also there was no metering in Denver. And I remember the arguments that were made for the project. There were essentially three, as I recall. One was uh, 
a number of colorful congressmen, uh, it's none of your damn business. You don't have any money in this project. It's a billion dollar project. We're gonna pay for it ourselves. That was one. And you know, um, it did seem very uh, surprising when I finally did the veto to a lot of people that we would take that action with respect to a project that was not a federal project. However, the Clean Water Act made quite clear the responsibilities we had to protect water, recreation, wetlands. And it struck me that statutorily, I, was, I had every right to inquire into this issue. EPA's approval was required anyway. Secondly, the question of uh, population increase, preparing for the future, supporting the growth of the region, uh, making sure that the suburbs did not go far afield to buy water rights from farmers and dry up some of the rural counties. And third, something that I remember was put by the governor directly to me on the edge of a governor's meeting in Washington. He said, we, I never forgot this phrase, he said, we don't need the water, we need the project. And what he meant was to knit the communities together, to give a codependency between the suburbs and the city. The water was going to be the glue. And from the point of view of urban planning, metropolitan development and unity, that made a lot of sense, I understood that. The extraordinary thing to me was in almost all of the conversations I had, almost no one, and perhaps I had more conversations with those who were for the project than who were against it, no one spoke rhapsodically of the resource. It was a place that I came to understand without having visited, it was exquisite. It was marvelously labeled the St. Peter's of trout fishing. And as I said last night to somebody, uh, I half expected that Fred Krupp and the Environmental Defense Fund would bring in the Pope before it was over <laughs> to oppose the project. It, um, it was those things, though. When I inquired of fishermen and people who really knew the area, it was an extraordinarily important, beautiful resource. And so there was every reason to take it seriously and to ask, is it really necessary? There was no water crisis. The projections showed that there would not be a specific need for the water for 20, 25 years, and that was without the efficiency, the conservation measures that had yet to be taken. And we all know that cities like Seattle, Los Angeles, many others have, have in some cases doubled their population without increasing their water use. So there were great opportunities to certainly to prove before taking a resource of that magnitude that it was absolutely necessary, but there was no crisis. The decision that I made was to start the veto process and we had first to have a regional administrator, Lita Hines, confirm that uh, all of this was merited. The structure of EPA was very carefully designed to work against any precipitous decision of such magnitude. And then the decision went to the assistant administrator for water, sitting to my right, Luana Wiltshire. By the way, when I uh, engaged her, I had her hiring interview. I had already made the decision to start the veto, and I asked her the question. I said, so what did you think of my uh, Two Forks decision? And she sat up very straight. She looked out the window. She said, I think it was a big mistake. And I said, well, you have my full attention. <laughs> and I can't believe I hired her, actually, after that. <laughs> because. Certainly my reputation was hanging in the balance for the next year while she uh, considered what she was going to do. And um, she said, I think it's too heavy a load. I don't think the, she had been at the agency, knew it better than I do, had been there in the Reagan years. I don't think the agency can withstand it. But at any rate, I did hire her. I saw in her objectivity, integrity, and strength. And that's certainly what we, what we got. Once the decision was made, there was a strong backlash, especially among Republican circles in Colorado. And the chairman of the Republican Party, Lee Atwater, who had been the campaign manager for President Bush, attacked me in the newspapers in Colorado and my decision. And so did Neil Bush, the president's son. And I went over to see Atwater when he came back to Washington. And he was 
He's a little guy, he was a feisty man, and he was standing up with his hands up. He said, in front of a bookcase, he said, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. And he said, well, I'm not, I'm not innocent. But he said, I'm gonna be innocent. He said, look, uh, I had to do that. Uh, you've driven those guys crazy out there, they're furious. But the mail is running seven to one in your favor at the White House. And I remember the communications director for the White House said, you know, there are 30 million fishermen, and he was one of them in this country. And um, it surprised the White House. It surprised me. I had not been party to the organization of the response. I was fantastically delighted to discover it. And then it dawned on me, it became very clear that my friends in the environmental field were doing this, that uh, Dave Wyman was one of them. There were people here who were, who were active in it, uh, Jay Hare at the National Wildlife Federation. But all of this was not part of what I was doing, nor could I have been seen to do it, actually. I had to keep quiet once I made the decision, and I had no conversation at all, not one, with Luana during the entire period she was inquiring into this. I guess I'm probably used my 10 minutes. I just, I just say um, there were some reactions that, that surprised me. One, I was in conversation at the home of uh, Moss Secretary Bob Mossbacker, who was Commerce Secretary. And we were in a little circle with the Agriculture Secretary, the Interior Secretary, and the Defense Secretary. And it was the Secretary of Defense, who, who was a, an avid fisherman, who said, uh, your two forks decision, and I particularly appreciated he said it in front of the others, was absolutely the right decision. He said, for many years in Congress, I held my nose or looked the other way when I voted for certain water projects. And he said, I think the era of those wasteful water projects is over. I think you finished it. And the question that I really have here that I would like to hear, those of you who know so much more about this than I do, address is, is that true? Did it? Did it have a lasting impact? As we very much hoped, I very much hoped, that it would have. That defense secretary, by the way, was, was uh, Dick Cheney. Um, and I think, um, shall I tell the story? No, I told it last night. Um, there, was, there was someone else. How many of you were there last night? Well, there was, some people have asked, did you, did you get adequately thanked for the project? Well, that, that one of those pictures up there, I was visiting the site after the, the dust had settled. In 90, I think, late 90, it was a winter, winter time, I believe, maybe, maybe it was spring. And I visited Cheeseman Canyon, and there was a fisherman, mid-20s, so his truck was, was stuck in the snow. And Chris Dirksen, another fisherman, a good friend of mine who worked for me at the Conservation Foundation, Chris and I helped pull this fellow out of the snow. And uh, he had a bumper sticker, two forks with a slash through it. And so Chris said, uh, this is the guy that, that did the veto of the dam. And this man looked at me with just rhapsodic uh, admiration. He was very excited and he said, well, damn. He said, so you did that. He said, you know, I've got some really first class shit up in my cabin. Now, I, <laughs> and I wouldn't share that with anybody, but if you'll come up to my cabin, I'll share it with you. <laughs> And I so wanted to go back and tell the president how much he was appreciated <laughs> and how I was sure that fellow voted Republican. <laughs> At any rate, yes, I was very well and emotionally thanked. Thank you. Well, that's, <laughs> that's terrific. And uh, of course, with the passage of time, that really good shit is legal in Colorado. <laughs>